What's happening, fellas? Feast your eyes on this classic beauty, 1975 Honda XL70. This is the thing dreams were made of for your inner child, or if you're a kid, still a kid, that, that wants a bike that has all the features of the, of the big bikes, look no further. The candy sapphire metallic original paint still shines on this beauty, and it's just been massaged to perfection by the techs here at the New England Motorcycle Museum. So uh, let's take her for a little demo ride. Super easy to start. It even has an ignition key. So if you don't want Junior to ride it when you're not home, you can pull the key out. One kick start, fires right up. Can't we like new with only 1,600 original miles. on this from Honda that I found online and they were, they were like this is the ultimate bike for on or off road because it's street legal it has lights on it but you can take the lights off and ride it off road if you want to turn it into a little race bike too and that's what happened to most of them so to find one that has the original light uh, headlight and tail light and the mirrors on it is unheard of it's 1600 original miles that's like one half a summer of riding it's like finding a, a time capsule and let me show you the best part about it it's street legal let's go take a ride So I got about a six page work order uh, and list of everything that was done to the bike and receipts and everything. But before I go get into that, let's talk about the era. The 70s was an evolution of sorts with Honda introducing in 1969 the SL series, which were on off road bikes, and they were a big success. Everybody was getting into the market Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, Yamaha, and of course KTM, uh, Penton and some of the European and German marks were out there, so there was a lot of competition, but nobody had really created a mini motorcycle. There were mini bikes, but there were mostly lawnmower engines. So Honda came out with the XL series as a mini version of Dad's big 250. So with Father's Day coming up, every kid wants to be like Dad. A lot of times Mom wants to get on a bike, but she can't handle the XL 250 if it's too big and she's shorter. So this bike was designed to be fun for the kids. And I can't tell you how many dads have probably bought one of these, but secretly, was it really for the kids or was it for them? Because as you've seen by the big smile on my face, they're an absolute hoot to ride. It's the ultimate pit bike, the ultimate trail bike. And Billy Blythe has written a, a few th items on it. I'll read, read down what he said. He said, uh, the 75 XL70 is Honda's mid-size 70cc trail bike. The evolution, this XL is the evolution of the original SL70 street legal in some states. It's a four speed transmission, just like the big bikes with a manual clutch. It gets just under a hundred miles per gallon, which is absolutely like free transportation. And in this day of, of $6 a gallon fuel, that's gonna come in handy. Top speed of around 30, 35 miles per hour. Very lightweight, 103 pounds, so it's not intimidating. Easy for Junior or the wife or, or dad to, to throw it around. Six and a half horsepower. It's a classic, ultra-reliable 72cc Honda four-stroke. Full-size motorcycle suspension and brakes. Typical Honda quality handling and performance. Fun machine with a lot of different uses. So, I mean, you can take this thing off-road. You can take it on the street. You can pretty much go anywhere with it. And like I said, if you wanted to use it in competition, you could take the headlight and taillight off very easily. Easy to ride, very maneuverable, great learner bike. This one's stock and original, and I, the paint on the factory original paint job is still on this bike. 
Uh, if you zoom in on the odometer, you'll see this thing is 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 a, a jewel. It's in mint condition with 1,664 original miles. The headlight bucket is in good shape. No evidence of it being smashed or crashed off-road. The original handlebars, the original brake and clutch lever. I believe these these might even be the original grips. Um, it's got a new set of mirrors on here. The original seat, the original side covers, all the chrome in paint on the tank and side covers is, is original. And, uh, the side cover has a little chunk taken out of it. They make reproduction versions of that. We have invested way more than we should have into this thing, into time and money. The bottom line on the work order uh, actually came out to $4,004 that we've invested into it. So we got to draw a line in the, in the sand somewhere because if we put too much into it, no one will be able to afford to buy it. So um, extensive work order on it. The guy who worked on this bike, uh, Bill Kelly, I worked with him when I was in high school at New England Cycle Sales in West Hartford. He's been turning wrenches for 40 plus years, uh, probably approaching 50 years at this point. And he went right through this bike carefully like, like he was doing it for himself. And that's, that's how we do these bikes here. And another, we, we don't, we try not to uh, remove any of the original components that are in good condition because like the original paint wasn't intact on the bike. We, we didn't want to mess with that because that, that tells a story of how the bike was cared for and the mileage on it. The engine is original. The engine has not been dismantled or rebuilt, but it's been tuned to perfection. So we did a compression test, perfect 130 PSI, but there was no spark on it. So we removed the flywheel, cleaned the rust off the rotor, clean and filed the points and then put a new battery in it. We set the points and the timing with the squawk box tool and the spark was perfect. So we removed the carburetor, disassembled it, put parts in the Sonic parts washer, completely clean, reassembled, rebuilt and reinstalled the carb. It has a number 65 main jet and a number 40 slow jet. We removed the original turn signals because uh, there was only two of them left and they were in rough shape. So we, we took those off. Um, you can buy replacement turn signals online for probably around 100 bucks and, and put them on if you want to but like i said we wanted to we wanted to keep the budget uh, affordable on this bike so um the uh fuel tank was removed flushed out with the power washer hot water power washer then it went in the solvent tank where we filled it up with solvent and put some nuts inside there and shook it up uh to loosen any uh uh old fuel or surface rust inside the gas tank so we had bolts and nuts inside there shook them up to, to loosen the uh the stuff the, the, the residual from 50 years in there so then the tank was uh, rinsed again and prepped with evapo rust where you put the stuff in there overnight and it cleans the inside of the tank and uh you can see the original paint the tank is dent free and the tank has been cleaned nicely let's take a look in there guys that's I hate it when when we when they have to seal a tank. That's usually an indication there's pinholes or rust. There's no sealant in there. That's just original clean metal on a dent-free original tank. To find one of these dent-free with 1,600 miles and perfectly straight headlight and original steel fenders is pretty much unheard of, guys. Uh, if you're following along this long, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the cables were all lubed. lubed. Uh, they replaced the, fu the fuel valve, the fuel pecock, and, and uh, so the tank was completely reconditioned along with the fuel valve and the fuel lines were replaced. Uh, he removed the clutch cover to gain access to, there was a broken bolt uh, in the clutch cover, so they removed the broken bolt, retapped the hole, ran the tap through all the other assembly holes on the, on the clutch cover, uh, put that back together, replaced the chain. If you zoom in, you'll see that's a quality gold brand new gold chain we like it kind of puts a little bling on the bike with the gold chain and that works really nicely with the metallic blue paint job the oil filter screen on the engine case was removed and cleaned uh build and tightened the cam chain inspected and secured the ignition switch uh the the rear brake lever was seized so he, he, he was lo was locking up so that's not a good thing so he removed that and cleaned it and greased the pivot point rem removed the broken turn signals and uh cleaned and the inside of the headlight shell and underneath the seat. Uh, he reset the valves and the ignition timing, adjusted the cam chain on it, then he pulled the wheels off. If you zoom in real close, show him the, the Harry uh, real, real close and show him those are brand new, period correct. Trials tires, street legal, replace the front and rear tires, um, and polish the chrome. Uh, the brake hubs, the brake shoes, the actuation, actuating mechanisms on the, the brake drums, front and rear were both serviced. Um, and then the new tires and tubes were installed front and rear. 
He rechecked the jetting of the carb, which was stock, and reinstalled it, assembled the air box with a brand new air filter, removed the original hand grips, oh, so those are reproduction hand grips, and installed brand new reproduction hand grips after removing the residue from the original grips. Installed the new grips, cleaned the lever, pivot, points, and lubed them, freed the rusted cable adjusters, cleaned glue and adhesive from the fork levers in the front in the front brake stay, and polished those, cleaned and removed rust from the inner portion of the swing arm and paint surface rust in painted the swing arm. They repositioned the clutch cable and adjusted that. Cleaned and greased the speedo gear drive. By the way, the speedometer works perfectly. Tested the speedometer, it's working beautifully. Uh, straightened the shifter. Th then he had a little bit of problem. It wasn't running quite right. So he, he, in, he enlisted the manic mechanic, who's our top tech here. Uh, he's probably the, him and the wizard and Laura Nice are like the best techs on the East Coast. And he, he uh, called, in, called in the manic mechanic. So he, he took a look and he saw that the carb jets were original but he had had it off a couple times, it still wasn't running right. So uh, Jeff discovered that the, the, it was running rich at low speed and the, the pilot jet had been drilled previously and it was over drilled. Sometimes people do that because they come lean from the factory and they can't get the jet. So jet, Jeff actually soldered the pilot jet closed and then micro drilled it with the, the proper size drill and replaced the jet needle and needle jet to help correct that. So the carb is essentially like brand new. It's completely rebuilt and the, the bike runs phenomenal. Then he took the exhaust, removed the exhaust system to reseal the exhaust gasket. That's the original pipe. The final one of these with the original pipe. If you zoom in, you can see it's a Honda Crisman spark arrestor. It's not rusted out. Uh, it's got a tiny little ding in it, but it's original one and they're, they're, it's unheard of to find, find the original exhaust in good condition. So the exhaust was taken off, sanded down and painted, um, cleaned the rust off the pipe, surface rust off the pipe and resealed the uh, sanded and filed the connection to the cylinder head so it would have, perform, have a perfect seal. Test rode it, there's no leaks, bike runs phenomenal. Um, I can't believe how good this thing run, runs, but if you look here guys, this is in, in, in small print, there's one, two, this is the, 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 the service checklist, three, and, and a half, four, and then of course the parts list, uh, new battery, new spark plug, new OEM intake boot. Zoom in on the intake boot where you can show them where it connects to the uh, air filter. That's the original air, air box guys with a new boot. Full tune up kit, Petcock was rebuild kit, new Sunstar gold chain, new NOS Honda stock grips, a new air cleaner, uh, new OEM replica mirrors. If you zoom in, you'll see the chrome's perfect on that and a new ignition cover. So. Uh, and new tires front and rear which um, in this total uh, they didn't have the parts uh, they didn't have the price on the tires in here so the tires and tubes are not included in this four thousand dollar total so then I went to the detail shop it was steam cleaned hand washed polished degreased they touched up the frame zoom in on that uh, the engine the hubs the triple clamp uh, any of the black areas uh, were touched up they polished the wheels, all the chrome and aluminum, the shocks, the controls, the mirrors, the handlebars, all the hardware. Touched up the, 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 the couple of nicks in the paint. And um, Christy Steiger actually reproduced the Honda graphics on the gas tank. Those are exact replicas of the original. And they were placed in the exact spot over where the original decals, which were um, a couple scratches and a little faded. So that really freshened it up in the side and also the graphics on the side cover. This $4,000 work order doesn't include the tires and it doesn't include the graphics um, and probably a couple other things, but uh, this is what we had for notes. I mean, the guys worked on this thing for quite some time. Bill had a total of 28 hours. Uh, we punch time clocks on these when we work on them, so 28 hours is four and a half, oh, it's three and a half days. And then Ryan had it for 10 hours, which is almost a day and a half, uh, a day and two hours. So the total amount of labor was 38 hours. And with the parts, the total correct total with the graphics and the tires should have been somewhere around 4200 but this work order uh, is $4,004. So quite a bit of time and money was invested into it. Um, no, it's not cosmetically perfect, okay, but it's original. And they're only original once, and it's been mechanically tuned to perfection. And again, 1,664 miles. Usually they come in, they've got eight, 10, 12,000 miles because they're street legal and they're fun to ride. So the family would ride the wheels off these things uh, on nights and weekends and um, just have a lot of fun on it. And, and that's really what it's all about. Father's Day weekend coming up. 
if you want to buy one of these for your pops or buy one for yourself or if you're a dad and you want to buy one for the kids or the wife everybody can use it this is a bike the whole family can enjoy and you know you never really outgrow an xl70 because well if your inner child is alive and well like mine is every time you get on this and start it and ride off into the sunset i can't think of a better way to spend a summer than, than riding your mini bike around the city or uh and these are super absolutely bulletproof reliable if you let it sit for 30 40 years like this one did you have to go through the whole thing but if you keep fresh gas in this and ride it regularly it'll give you years of enjoyment and the best part about this is if you buy a new honda uh grom or whatever you spend four or five thousand on a new bike as soon as you roll it off the lot you lost a thousand dollars whatever you buy this for it's going up in value because this is an investment quality classic um, if you follow Meekum in all the auctions or even our auctions here at the museum you'll know these are are going up in value every day uh, they're still affordable but who knows for how long 47 year old classic with 1600 miles did i say it's fun it's a blast so thanks for watching this is going back in the museum on display if you have any questions call us 860-454-7024 please hit the like and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet 80 percent of our viewers aren't subscribed it'll help us out hit the subscribe button hit the notification button and uh give us a call if you have any questions 860-454-7024 happy father's day to all the dads thanks for watching god bless america Josh awesome.